Hi guys, um, I'm here today to speak with you uh, about venture capital, what it means, uh, what are these guys, and uh, how to interact with them and eventually raise money from these guys. Who is this beardo who's standing in front of you? Um, I'm originally from Finland, the frigid Northlands, uh, moved to Germany then to work even more on games. Um, my background is for the past 10 years or so um, with free-to-play startups, uh, venture-backed, and my role has been from finance to operations um, and performance marketing. So pretty many hats, to be honest. And um, my most recent gig before moving to Germany was with Armada Interactive in Finland. We raised in two rounds around 10 million dollars from London, Stockholm, Seoul. And right now, I'm working with remote control productions. What is this gig then? We are Europe's major development family. We have currently 14 different studios working with us um, across Europe. We are present in Germany, Austria, Finland, and uh, of course here in beautiful Romania. The whole point of remote control productions is, to put it in a nutshell, is that developers develop, because that's what they like to do, and we take care of the rest. On this note, I'll be here for the whole day, uh, hovering around like the guy before me, so please come and say hi. So, today's talk is to have everybody on the same page. We have a quick one, uh, 101 on VCs, what it's about. Then we go through the pitch deck essentials, which is the majority of this talk, which means that um, a bunch of slides that you absolutely, in my opinion, have to have in your deck. Otherwise, your chances of success are significantly lower. Then, if we have time, we will cover briefly when to raise, how much to raise, from whom to raise. So, venture capital. So, venture capital and venture capitalists such as VCs. They invest in new, emerging, small businesses with high potential for growth. And therefore, operating with a very high risk. That's the whole deal of venture capital. Why do they find games interesting then? Because there is a very low barrier to entry with digital platforms, let's say with uh, Apple and Google, you pay $100 a year and anybody can publish on those platforms. Digital distribution. So replicating digi digital goods costs basically nothing. And monetization models, mainly free to play, they allow for massive growth. What's also important in here is that really, really small teams can support a global audience. And that is, of course, fairly efficient in terms of monetization. So let's jump to the essentials. What we'll cover here is your vision, mission, strategy, your team, your product, what it's all about, right, in terms of your uh, company and development team, and your budget, one of my favorite subjects. Um, so this part, many people consider, don't get me wrong, consultant bullshit. Uh, they absolutely loathe writing stuff about what they'll be in the future, or uh, what is their company all about, or stuff like that. But then again, this is very, very important to show these guys that you have actually thought through what it is. It is the what, the who, and the reason why your company exists. So please, 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 use some time, actually, before going out and pitching, to come up with a solid mission statement. I'll just blow through this. And vision statement. How these two tie together is that your mission statement actually tells why your company exists, and your vision statement tells you where do you want to be, right? So then it ties into the strategy which means, how do you get there? 
Um, if you have difficulties in coming up with this, you can use references from your friends or contacts, or you use terms that are familiar within your space. I like to use the example of uh, we are the Instagram of pizza delivery. So people know, and there are touch points where you can actually grab when you are uh, developing your vision, mission, and strategy. Team. Most important slide, and we will stay here for quite a while, because in reality, VCs do not fund your company or your product that you're developing. Actually, what they are funding or looking at is your team. And why is this? Um, the team always needs a visionary, visionary leader, a guy who's super passionate about what he's doing or she's doing, uh, is capable to execute, is able to step in front of a crowd and make audiences go wild. What you also need to present is your founding team. The founding team basically means that your founding team knows the games they want to build. Are they both capable and willing to execute in great uncertainty and surrounded by fog of war? Then you have a management team, which usually in startups consists of a few people of the founding team, not all of them, but a group of key personnel who actually then support the CEO and are aligned and are able to execute well. Your development team. Uh, do you already have a team in your back pocket um, ready to start coding and designing and uh, drawing art once you can pay them salaries? Here, it's also important to think about how do you actually uh, A, attract this talent and B, retain that talent, right? So what you need, this also pertains to company culture then and the vision and mission that you guys have. Because you need to think of things like how do you create a, comp uh, a company culture that actually attracts the talent and you, how you foster that talent. Um, good ways of doing this is, well, compensation, of course, and also... Um, equity. So what you do is that you give a piece of the company to your key employees. Uh, usually vesting periods are four years on, on options, so your senior server engineer probably thinks twice before uh, replying to this headhunter's email or, or uh, engaging in conversations with the guys next door. Then there are a few aspects that play actually to your uh, advantage here, which is your teams, uh, so founding teams, seniority. What's the track record? Shamelessly use uh, logos of the companies these guys have been working for, or currently are working, in your pitch deck. Cohesion. Have these guys worked together? How did it go? How did they actually fare? This is probably the most important thing that the VCs will ask you, because they are concerned uh, when, you know, the next uh, hitch or problem comes up, if these guys are actually able to uh, get together and continue rolling. Hunger, team hunger. Have you perhaps produced a prototype out of your own pocket? Is one example. And team composition. This is a fairly obvious point, like you need to have a nice balance of programmers, designers, maybe a producer, uh, designers, artists, tech artists, and most importantly here, well, not most importantly, but very importantly, that often gets missed is business acumen. What this means is that you need to have a guy or guys who actually knows that games is a business, and even though it is a form of art and we all share the passion here, right, you need to be able to make money with it, right? Because otherwise, these guys with the money, they're not really interested in you. Then we have advisors and angels. Do you have uh, one, two, three, four of these guys lined up? Uh, how committed are they to your cause? What's their experience? How can they help you? How can they open doors? And then we come to product. What well, the product needs to be in, so that it is attractive to venture capitalists is that it has to be scalable, both in terms of distribution, digital platforms allow for this, uh, very easily, but also in revenue streams. So that's why free-to-play 
is by far the most interesting uh, monetization method for venture capitalists because it basically provides infinite scaling capabilities. What's your competitive advantage? What is the blue ocean that you are uh, actually pursuing? Or are you maybe disrupting the market with a totally new uh, and exciting product? What is the freshness and familiarity of, uh, of, of the game you're producing? How, is it, how does it bring something new to the table while still being familiar so that the app store attractiveness is there, right? Are you perhaps a first mover? Uh, what's your potential for success? You, need to, you don't need to list these in your pitch deck, but you need to be able to answer these questions. Um, another important topic is here um, is how do you protect the success of your game? How do you actually reach the king of the hill position within your genre? And how do you keep it? Mm. Yeah, that was the position. Brand and IP. This pertains to App Store attractiveness, right? Which means that you get users for either free or at lower cost. The economy loop. So how does your core gameplay loop look like? How do you monetize your game, actually? Mm. Make sure that you have an understandable image of the loop uh, that you are presenting as one slide in your pitch deck. How's your competition? Here you need to do a bit of your homework and show that you have actually done your homework, which means that take a look at the genre you're operating in, uh, or the genre your game is in, or maybe a cross genre and combining the best of two for a totally new take, and see what the competition is there. What are uh, the most profitable players in that market, and how are you planning on overtaking them? Now we come to <laughs> one of my favorite subjects, which is budgeting. So sometimes I still meet people who say that um, the global games market, it's approximately 56 gazillion quadrillion uh, dollars worth, and if we get 1% out of that, we'll be filthy rich. It's a viable thing to say, but that won't unfortunately get you anywhere. So what you need to do is to actually create the model or use a model, existing model. I'm happy to share mine, which I've used successfully a few, few times, and um, explain how do you actually generate revenue? How do you keep your burn rate in check? What is your launch plan? How much are you planning on spending money on launching? And how does your marketing ROI, how is it so good that it just keeps on feeding the machine, right? How your live ops generate um, a viable and valuable community that just keeps on feeding itself. And at the end, you have runway. So this means cash, at your hand at the end of each month. This gives you your estimate on the amount of money you're planning to raise as well, because you obviously have some kind of a milestone that you tag it to, and then you know how much money you need. It also has an impact on how much you're looking to raise, and obviously we have time to cover that. What all this means, where it all boils down, is that the potential investor wants to see this. So <laughs> this is the end result of your whole budgeting exercise. And it produces your estimate on taking over the world in a very, very compressed time frame. And this hockey stick you can back and argue with the revenue model that you have just generated, right? And the whole pitch deck revolves around your vision and your capacity to execute for generating 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. Uh, return on investment for the venture capitalist money. So, then, when to raise? Always be raising. Or at least thinking about it, preparing for it. Keep your plan and milestones in mind, which means if you're, uh, this is in fact a very important point, because let's say you are approaching soft launch. 
of your game or you are currently at soft launch. Uh, the chances are that if you then start pitching to investors, uh, specifically in the early days of soft launch or right before it, is that they just want to see how it goes. So basically you're pitching for nothing. So they want to wait and you may be in need of money. Have something to show the progress. So maybe a vertical slice, a playable, that prototype, depending on which stage you're raising money. And have something to show and tease. This is actually uh, works pretty well. Uh, this pertains to the previous point of showing the progress, but relates more to um, art assets, or maybe a cool character animation that you can show uh, that you're actually capable of, uh, you and your team are actually capable to execute. Very important point here is that you need to have data backing your thesis as early as possible. Games are mostly art, like mentioned before, but they are also, to a large degree, science. So what you need to have is data on what the users are doing. How is your first time user experience funnel going? Where do the users drop off? Uh, what, do, what do they like most in your game? Which levels do they play the most? Uh, which store items do they like the most? And some people, they actually dislike the idea of measuring your game or measuring the uh, potential monetary success of your game. But that is very, very important for venture capitalists because you need to produce some KPIs. And um, it is virtually impossible to raise money if you do not uh, consider this aspect. How much? Two schools of thought here. Number one, just enough to survive to a specific milestone. What's good with this is that you maximize your valuation potential because, and also minimize dilution. These both uh, are two, si same, uh, two sides of the same coin. So what this means is that you're not giving that much out of your company against potentially a larger uh, amount of money. This comes with a high risk, of course, because what if feature creep hits in? What if you, your shipping gets delayed or you can't reach that milestone? What if some people leave your company? You need to have a buffer, of course, so that you are comfortable in actually developing the game, but you should still stay hungry with this strategy because this creates a sense of urgency, like the um, end of the runway is looming at the end of the horizon. It's a very... Uh, a powerful method of uh, committing. The other part is just uh, as much as you can. The problem with this is that your risk of valuation then with next round becomes far too incremental. If you haven't actually had a smash hit in your hands, but then again, all your problems are solved anyway if you have a smash hit. And also high dilution early in the game because you are giving a bigger piece of the pie away. So your percentage ownership of your company is, of course, smaller. And most importantly, I have unfortunately personally seen this happen, is complacency. So you have a lot of cash in your, in, on your bank account. So you might get comfortable, you might get a bit lazy. Uh, you hire far too many people and then you can't get rid of them when you end up in trouble. And this is the total opposite of being hungry. So keep that in mind. Because one day you might wake up that you've burned 60% of your cash. Uh, you're not in soft launch. Uh, your guys are fighting. <laughs> they want more money because they know that you have a lot of money. And then it becomes far too difficult to actually execute in a compressed time frame. From whom? So here, pay attention to what each investor can actually uh, bring to the table. If your value prop is so good that uh, you draw a lot of in, uh, investor attention, you'll need to think whom you'll accept to join. What can these guys do for you, apart from just giving you money? Maybe opening doors to important territories. Maybe you're talking with a VC fund that uh, has, has its headquarters in Europe, but they also have excellent connections in the States or China. 
Platform relations or other connections play a very important role because you need to start interacting with these guys well before you're even soft launching your game so that you can actually um, then get their support or maximize the chance of getting their, them, their support once you launch. An important point here, by the way, is that never, ever, ever assume any platform feature because that would be foolish. Uh, if you happen to get it, it's great because you get an influx of uh, new users and that saves your marketing dollars, but don't even consider it, to be honest. Then these guys may also have a pool of other uh, entrepreneurs who are eager to share their experiences and uh, learnings and where they failed and maybe group together once or twice a year to share this. This I have found very, very helpful, so please pay attention to this. They may have some experience with key areas of operations, such as marketing or live ops. This pertains more to angels, but also um, the partner at the VC that you're actually speaking to preferably should have some experience on these. Term sheet cover, let's cover it really briefly. So the term sheet that you then get with your lead investor, it lists, lists the uh, different share classes. Uh, what are the rights of these specific share classes? Um, the terms are there to make sure that everything is black on white before you actually receive the money. It also lists things like, uh, what if your key people leave? What happens to them? What happens to their shares? And it also works as a basis for the shareholders agreement that you will eventually sign once, you, once you're closing your round. An important point here is valuation. What this means is that please do not disclose your own thoughts on your company valuation have the lead investor give their idea to you first and then you can negotiate because the chances are that you go in far too high and then you bust the case because the guy just laughs at you or you go far into low and then of course uh, this leads to a lower company valuation once it's put on paper and you have actually agreed on that it's super difficult to negotiate uh, once there is a certain figure on the table and like I said, these VCs, they usually have an idea uh, what your company's value should be because they are professionals within the gaming industry and they have reference points that they can then compare you with. We still have, yeah, and this means that you have lead investor. So congr congratulations for that because that means that 90% of your round's work is done and there's only the other 90% left. On board, a uh, couple matters here on board structure or composition, which is keep it as small as possible because it makes, it makes decision making so much easier going forward. If you have too many people on your board, you need to call them all up uh, for the meeting and uh, you cannot yet again execute in a very compressed time frame. And board matters then. Um, one key point that I want to share with you guys here is that there will become a time when uh, there is a very, very difficult matter that you need to talk with the board. In this case, call them beforehand. This might sound, uh, call each and every board member beforehand. If you have important observers, call them too. Uh, this might sound undermining the uh, board's actual significance, but quite the opposite, because what VCs hate a lot is surprises in board meetings because then you just start discussing that actual surprise or the hard matter and your whole meet might get derailed and it lasts four hours and nobody likes it and then everybody's grumpy at the board dinner the following evening so always call these guys beforehand and say this is my subject i'd like to talk at the board meeting and this is my view on it so think about it for a few days uh, to pretty much sum it up then is the uh, mantra that I've learned along the years, which you can keep on re uh, repeating to yourself, which would be always be hustling, always be raising, and always be shipping. Thank you.